Hi there, Sandra here. I'm going to be doing some videos on the Shortcut Slot 6 now that it can actually officially control the Julia and the Romeo as independent software. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to go through the effects which are in Shortcut Slot 6. Now they have added some extra ones that were not in Shortcut Slot 5, so even if you've used 5, you might want to check this out. So on the effects, the first one we have is 3D Extrude. Now this one is really good fun. You can change the colour of it, you can remove the foreground if you want to. Um, by changing the offsets, you move it around however you like to move it. And you can use perspective if you wish. Prefer not to usually. You can change the depth as well, so you can make it shallower, make it deeper, whatever you like to do. And you can also set it to outline only so that the shadow part is basically only a line. Um, yeah, like most of these effects, you just have to play with them to get the result that you want, but it's a very useful one to have. 3D Rotate. This one is a very unusual sort of effect. Uh, maybe if you do a lot of typesetting, you might have a reason to use this one. Not something that I've got a reason to use most of the time. But lots of variations that you can play around with. Barcode Generator. Now this one, I think, is very much geared to those who are in business because I certainly don't use barcodes. And I'm sure that if you do use barcodes, then these things mean something to you. They mean nothing to me at all. But you can create your own barcodes. And if, for example, I type in here, pairs, update my preview, I end up with a barcode. So I click on OK, drive this further in here. And you can see, yes, I have a barcode that says Paris. I can only assume this works because I've got no barcode reader to test it with. So that's as much as I can really say on that one. Barrel distortion. This one doesn't have much in the way of anything to adjust. So I'll just show you what it does. It definitely distorts. And doesn't go down to... Well, it does actually go to minus numbers. So you might find it useful for making different shapes for tags and labels, that sort of thing. Bridge warp. You can see better what it does. Now, if we have a straight warp done, then altering these makes it go like a roof, traditional roof. If I have that unchecked, I get a curve. So you can adjust all these different measurements according to what you want and you can have your auto preview on you can also sync the offsets so that you get a different result again so you would have that and you can play around this uh, to your heart's content really bulge and canned i'm going to put these into one so with bulge you have the separate section where you can uh, change your offsets from the top and leave the bottom ones the same, if you see what I mean. So I can put an offset up here, which is going to alter the shape of that, but the bottom one has remained the same. But I can also do it either together, where this one will go up as well, or I can have it opposite, where it will go downwards. So depending on which version you have, you've got infinite control over it. You can play with and you can alter to get whatever desired effect that you want. And I can do this side as well. So lots of variety and quite a useful one for making different kind of uh, label designs, I find. And that is the canned. Now this, obviously, from the diagram you can see, it's got less controls over it. You don't need as many controls, but it makes your design look like it's going around a can. It gives it that curved effect. 
and you can change the angle of it and the diameter. You can put the angle down that way as well and then get it to how you like it and then you click OK and you're all done. But I'm going to click on Cancel. Cast Shadow. This one I really like, especially if doing a print and cut because you can actually print the shadow out and cut out a shape and it's quite an interesting effect. But even if you're just going to print it, it allows you to add a lot of extra dimension and you can play around with this until you get the shapes that you want. And you can also change the colour of the shadow if you wish to, so you could change it to a dark red. And it's just a very, very nice effect to be able to have. Now, when it comes to the other type of shadow that you can have here, you've got a drop shadow, and that's a different thing altogether. This is kind of like the flat shadow. Something is floating up above a surface. You can adjust it, obviously, to make it wherever it is that you want it to be. And you can also change the color and so on and so forth. But it's a different type of shadow to that one. Next effect is actually going to be the knockout, but you'll notice that it's not selected because I haven't got anything selected here. Now what I want to do is put this over the bucket here and what I want to do is to make it so that this cuts out of the bucket and maybe give it a little bit of an offset as well. So what I want to do on this particular occasion is to copy it, to paste it in place and go to Object Hide. So I've got this here, but I've got one underneath it, which is hidden. And I find this is by far the easiest way of working with this. So if I select my bucket and my holiday, go to the effects, go to knockout. And at this particular instance, I've not got a gap, but I do want a gap. So I'm going to put a 0.2 centimeter gap on, click the preview, and then I will get that. Now, that's not quite as I actually want it to be, but I will click on OK. And I'm then going to drag that away. And then I'm going to go to Object, Show All, and I've got it exactly as I want it, with my holiday fully complete in my bucket and on the outside edges. Now, that is the difference. If I was just going to, let's just undo this completely. Let's just move that aside. Just check, no, I've not, not got anything else there. If I wanted to just put this into the bucket in its entirety, then I would have been fine just by doing it with the one layer. So it's there. Select the whole lot, go to Effects, go to Knockout, put in my Offset, go to Preview, and that's exactly what I want, so I can click OK. It's only because my writing was going to be bigger than my bucket that I needed that extra copy of the wording. And that's how you use the cutout or the knockout effect in Shortcuts a lot. I'm going to do the lattice and the line fill in one section. So first of all, we're going to be doing the lattice. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can alter the width and the gap and the angle. You can indeed rotate it if you want to, and you can invert it so you get that. So if I click on OK, there we have it. We have a lattice. I'm going to undo that one because I want to do a line fill now go to Effects, go to Line Fill. Now we have lots of different options here. We can go for a contour one. And I'm going to take this down. I'm going to go 0.02. And I'm going to click on the Auto Preview. And as you can see, this is giving me a bit of a mess. So if I click 
up and update the preview. This is giving me more of the effect that I would probably be after if I was doing a contour one. Now, if I do a linear fill, because you've got lots and lots of different options here, we have the line fill, and I've got a cross hatch on there. If I take the cross hatch off, you can see that it is only lines. I've got an angle of 15 degrees. Sometimes you want to change the angle for a fill, and sometimes you don't. Now, I happen to know that if I'm using a Sakura pen, and I do a straightforward line fill, nothing complicated, just a line fill. What I actually need is 0.02. And I'm going to update my preview. You can see that is giving a complete solid color. And that's because that will actually color in the entire thing with the line fill. Now, if I was going to do a cross hatch of one, I would actually make this a much higher number. In most cases with my particular pens I'm using, I found that doubling the gap between a normal line fill and a cross hatch has exactly the right effect. So my cross hatch would have been 0 0.04. Update the preview. And as you can see, it gets a very good fill color. Now, the reason you're going to have to play with this is because of the size of your pen tip. If, for example, you're using a Sakura pen, I've just given you what will give you a good result. If you're using a much heavier tip pen, a much thicker tip pen, you will need to space those lines out more. If you are going to be doing engraving with an engraving tip, you might need to close the lines up a bit. And it will depend on what you're putting your pen lines on, what you're engraving on, what you're engraving with, etc., etc. And you'll just have to do some experimentation. The easiest way of doing this is to get some card out, get the type of pen that you're most likely to use, and do some experimentation. Start off with what I gave you, for example, of point not two and this is metric not inches by the way and work your way from there until you get the right result once you've got it write it down in a notebook and keep it by your cutter and that way you won't have to worry about every time you go and you think oh what was the setting i had for this what was the setting over that you'll know exactly what it was if you do engraving, do the same thing, get a sample to be working correctly and then just write down the numbers because it saves you a lot of time in the end. Monogram is one of those things that you don't have to have a shape to start off with. So you just click on monogram and the box comes up. You have a range of frames that you can choose from. So no frame at all, classic, decorative. You can see the frame choices here. Floral, for example. I think this one's quite a nice one and then you want to choose your text and so you choose your initials for example you can have one you can have these different varieties of initials if you like i quite like this one where the bigger one is in the center you choose your particular font from all the fonts you have on your computer the color of it etc the tracking and basically you can alter the width and the height and everything, get it as you want and just click OK and your monogram is done. Really handy if you want to do a load of t-shirts or uniforms, anything like that. Nesting. Nesting is handy if you're short of materials or you're just trying to save what you actually have got. And basically, it will put things into as small a space as possible. You specify the area and the area height, so the width and the height, how much space you want between each particular item, the number of rotations of those items you're willing to put up with, uh, the fit threshold. You can ungroup things which are already grouped, or you can just do a selection only and update the preview. And there we go, it has fitted them in a different way. 
So you just click on OK and that's what it's done for you. Object on path requires you to have at least two objects selected. So I've now got a dolphin here and I've got a wibbly wobbly path and I want to put my dolphin on that path. Click on the auto preview. Now, one thing important to note is that the object that you want to place on the path has got to be your top layer. So you need to place it at the front. If it isn't, then it will work in the opposite direction and that won't give you the effect that you want. Now, in this particular case, I would use a count. So maybe I would go for seven dolphins. There we are, seven dolphins. And they're following this path orientation here. I've got them going on the middle of the path. Maybe I want them on the top of the path. Um, maybe I want them on the bottom. There we go. <laughs> Looks like they're coming out of the water. Now you can stretch to the path length. If I move this out of the way, you can do that if you want. You can warp to the path, which warps the shape of the actual items, which is not what I want in this particular case. You can reverse the path order. You can remove the path once it's done. You can weld things. You can remove the original object. You could do fill path length. Now that would fill the entire path with dolphins. You can alter the gap between them. And there we go. You could also crop them. And what that does is it crops the bits which are outside or inside the path if you have a closed path. So, for example, that isn't going to do me any good because I don't have a closed path. But basically, it's a very useful tool. I often use it with circles going around shapes, so you get a scalloped edge, all that sort of thing. And it's one that I use an awful lot. So I'm going to click on OK. And then you can select your path and you can remove it if you want to. So a nice way of getting objects to flow around a particular shape in the way that you like. The Pierce effect. Now the Pierce effect is going to give you basically the positioning of needle points. Piercing tools are generally round tools and they're rather like very heavy duty needles. You put a foam or a silicone pad underneath your material that you're piercing and you then have a piercing tool that goes up and down rather like a machine needle does in a sewing machine. And the only thing really that you need to do with this is to alter the spacing. So if I preview that, you see you've got very large spacing and you just take it down until you get the result that you want. There we go. Um, a lot of machines don't support piercing and therefore it will be of limited use if you don't have the ability to put a piercing tool in your machine. The next effect is Puzzle Generator, and this is pretty much self-explanatory. I would probably go down for fewer rows than that and update my preview so you can see what I get here and then click on OK. And you have all your puzzle shapes. Now, personally, I find this of limited value unless you have a CNC, which cuts wood, because I find that cutting card to do a puzzle is not as successful as I would like in general. QR code. This is one for businesses, obviously. Not something that I've ever really played around with. Uh, if you have a business, then you may well be familiar with making QR codes in the first place, which I am not. But it has various things that you can put into it. And then you just update your preview. And if you like the result, then you click on OK. As I said, not something I've ever really looked into and I don't have a need for it. But it's there should you require it. Raise. This is a fun one, I guess. Um, I have no particular use for it, but it's a pattern type. 
and you can adjust this so that it is lines or that it's radial and the other option is circular there we go oh <laughs> makes my eyes go funny that one does let's take that down and go for radial and you can adjust things obviously you can put the point of origin to the center which it is at the moment or something like the top left or the bottom right or whatever i'll keep it on center and you have an auto preview and an update preview choose your colors keep the original if you want to and then click ok so a fun thing to play with the next effect i'm doing is rhinestones and this is pretty involved if you're in the habit of doing t-shirts and things you might want to be quite interested in this you have a lot of help given on the left hand column so i'm not going to go through absolutely everything you can choose to do a fill an outline or both so if i do a fill and i preview this there we go we have our preview so i could increase or decrease the spacing on this i can detect corners i can alter a lot of things i can stagger the layers for example if i want to put an angle on it and click on preview and it should eventually alter it again for me there we go so there's different ways of doing a fill from a contour to a linear fade to a fade radial raise linear grid whatever with different sizes and shapes of stones so if you're into rhinestones this one might well be for you now the next one is also rhinestones but it is rhinestone scatter and this one is usually used in order to put some kind of rhinestone pattern outside of shape so you might have letters in vinyl in the middle and then put a scatter around it so if i click on preview on this you can see that this is the type of thing that you get there are different ways that you can actually scatter them so you can practice with those and you can increase the spacing to fit the path decrease the spacing to fit the path change the rhinestone shapes for example and here we have a preview of that shape instead if i click on the square ones get the square shape and go back to the round ones get the round shape you can decrease the stone count if you wish and then click on the preview again so you can mess around with this and get the fade right and the scatter right and it can be a very very pretty effect around whatever it is that you want your main viewpoint to be okay my next effect is shadow layer this one i use all the time um I don't think there's anything I ever make that does not involve using a shadow somewhere along the lines. So with a shadow, it's adding an extra layer to your design that sits underneath it. And you can increase the size either by using the slider or by using the numbers, depending on which your preference is. You can change the angles that the shadow has. You can do an inset shadow if you prefer to do an inset one for some reason. Um, you can have a blackout shadow. If you have shapes which have more than one item in there and you only want an exterior line, then you want to click on the blackout shadow. You can make it a print and cut outline. So that automatically makes it a print and cut outline for you. Or you can have it as a fabric outline, which I'm assuming is probably a cut. I haven't tried that one. I'm assuming that, it, that that is a cut. So you can change the color of your outline. You can have it as an outline shape only. So you don't have a solid fill if you don't want one. And you can also have more than one layer to it if you want to do that. You can increase the layer size variance as well, if you so wish. There we go. And you can go from one color at the start to another color at the end. So 
lots of different ways that you can apply your shadows. It's very, 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 very useful and it's very easy to use. Now the difference between the shadow layer and a path offset is the path offset will delete the original line. The shadow layer does not. The shadow layer sits underneath it. Okay, this one is symmetrical mirror. Now it's pretty obvious what it does, but you have a choice whether you do left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top. This happens to be very useful. If you have drawn something yourself, uh, maybe it's supposed to be symmetrical. Maybe, like for example, you drew a tag and you suddenly looked at it and you thought, I don't think that's quite symmetrical. And you wanted to make sure that it was symmetrical. So you can use that with this particular method. It's quite easy. So you would say, OK, that's the shape that I actually wanted to reproduce. And you can update the preview and then you get it completely and utterly symmetrical and you could put another stalk in. You can do things like that and then you have a different shape. OK, double apple isn't particularly useful, but you could perhaps mess around with that and make it look like a caterpillar face. My very, very basic caterpillar. OK, my next one is tiling. Now this is done if you have an image which you want to cut out and it is too large for your material. So you can split your design into pages that you basically put together. So we can have evenly spaced columns or fixed width or indeed custom columns. You can increase the number of columns here and you can see here what it's going to be doing. And if I do the same that way, you can see exactly what's going to happen. You can remove a tile if for whatever reason you want to remove one. And you can specify the overlap that you require. You can export it, make the pages, and then you can do whatever it is that you need to do with your file. Now, this is something which is available only in the pro version of Shortcuts a lot. And it's that way because mostly it's going to be people who are in businesses who are using it. Right, this next effect is not one that I use greatly, but it's a title crawl similar to that that you'd have at the end of a movie. So you can adjust the height of this. And you can adjust the angle. So, yeah, you can play around with that until you get the result that you want. I'm not quite sure why you'd want it, but I guess if you're into sign writing, then you might find that quite useful. Not for me, but other people might well need it. Now, Wave is something that I do use fairly often. It's really handy if you want to do smooth lines that are not straight. Uh, you can adjust the amplitude and also the cycle number until you get the result that you like. Don't just keep it for straight lines or boxes or whatever. Use it with other shapes as well. Sometimes you can get some very interesting results. This next feature is also only in the Pro edition of Shortcuts a lot, and it's the weeding one. Now, I do find this quite useful, particularly if you're doing lettering that is a pain in the neck to weed in one piece because you can add different versions of lines in order to get things so that they are separated out into smaller areas. So for example, I might decide to have this. So instead of having to take out one piece of vinyl that has absolutely everything to remove from it, I can remove it in smaller sections which gives me more control. And certainly I found with lettering and small bits and pieces, it's easier to keep track of what you're lifting and what you're leaving behind. But it is only in the pro version. If you don't have the pro version, you will just have to do this manually if you want to do that. You can choose to have a border on it or not to have a border and you can choose the border offset. Personally, I like the border. It just makes things easier. But if you don't have it, 
don't fret, you can manually put your own lines in. It just takes longer to do that. And finally, we have wrapper. Now this one is available in both the normal version and the pro, but there are a lot of pro users who use this wrapper function, I'm sure. So we can alter the top and the bottom diameter and the slant height. You can add a template if you want to. You can alter the offsets and the scaling and you have an auto preview. So if I alter, for example, the top diameter, take this down. OK, this would be, say, like a tankard. If you had a tankard with a wide base, you might use that. If I was doing something which was more like a V shape, if you like, then I would be doing that sort of thing. And these things are quite useful if you want to make things such as cupcake wrappers and all that sort of stuff, as well as being able to make things which are naturally curving to the shape of a beaker or something of that ilk. So a very useful function. Again, you just have to play with it to work out what you're actually doing. You can see it's got lots of variation in here. And you can just get it to do exactly what you want it to do. You put your measurements in and you get the result. And yeah, you can't really fault that. So that brings me to an end of my list, if you like, of shortcuts a lot effects. It's not in depth. It is just designed to show you what effects it's got and then you can play with them and work out whether you actually want them. If you want to play with Shortcut Slot without buying it, you can have a two week trial for free. You just can't actually cut anything with it because it will put cut lines through your design. So there's no point in wasting your material, but you can certainly play with it and find out if it's for you and whether you actually like the software, if you're going to be able to use it, if you want to use it and you know, if you do, which version that you want to actually get. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care now.